Hi, my name is Jay Martin, and we are on a 3v3 game. The map is Glacieria. This game was sent to me by this player right here named Mr. Chopsticks, which is cute, and I approve of the name. Uh, we are uh, Prussia, and I noticed that it's raining. And a, a good tip, side note, the game has a bug where sometimes it will rain even if you select no rain. The way around that is when you go to host your game, if you select the weather option light rain and the time of day as the afternoon, you will not have rain. I do not know why that is the case, but it's a little bug and that is the workaround. Select light rain in the afternoon and you will not have rain. The reason rain kind of sucks is it kind of lags the game out a little bit because it's adding all this extra you know, layer of graphics to it. It also slows your units and fatigues them a little bit more, which I don't know, you may or may not prefer, but that's a side note on the little rain bug in the game. Chopstick here is Prussia, and we have six light infantry, a bunch of musketeers, five lancers. Interesting, this game was played on medium settings. Notice there's only 80 men in this musketeer unit. The real effect that medium settings has is it makes musketeer, or excuse me, it makes lancers a lot better. The reason for that is the game has this magic number where at 49 men a, a line unit can square, but at 48 men it can't. Can't give you an explanation for that either, but 48 men in a line unit can't square. And of course, once you can't square anymore, lancers get a lot, lot stronger. And it's much easier to only deal, what would that be, you know, 32 casualties to an 80-person unit as opposed to 52 casualties to the 120-man unit you'd have on large settings. So just kind of FYI, medium settings, the big deal. You probably want lancers. Um, chops, woo, not really good at controlling the camera. Okay, so chop, I'm terrible. Chopstick's position here on this map is he's going to spawn closer to this big hill right here. This is the big feature on this map. So if Chopstick wants, he can get on the hill first. Um, we, we have our lights running way uh, ahead of our line. I think that probably means that, you know, we, we didn't click run on these units. You do want to keep your line infantry, you know, fairly close to your lights because these dudes are really vulnerable to calves. So that's why we need line buddies backing them up. Um, I love how aggressive Chopstick is getting. Chopstick is running up for the hill, and he, he wants to fight. Uh, we might pay a little more attention to this movement order because we're going to need to refine it because Chopstick's opponent actually ran up too. And, you know, obviously the blue dots right now, the lights are going to run in for melee. And <laughs> Let's, we just need to stop for a minute. We just need to stop for a minute. And... I have no idea. The chevrons everywhere. Just you have a chevron and you have a chevron and Oprah's in the back giving out chevrons to everyone. Don't get this at all. This player also brought grenadiers. Uh, this is probably not the best place to bring them. I should probably just do a video on how to use grenadiers properly. But what we're facing is a handful of lights against a bunch of grenadiers. So this isn't the scariest army you've ever seen. But what we need to do is because the grenadiers are really close to the lights. We want to get Chopstick to stop while his, you know, you know, just the firing arc is just targeting the lights. That's kind of what we want to do because then we'll get overflow bullets into the grenadiers. Actually, I, I feel like the lights, yeah, the lights aren't even in light infantry behavior, so these guys are going to take extra casualties anyway. And um, so Chopstick walks up and starts shooting. I love that. And we actually walked a little too close because you see this grenadier in the back is firing. Actually, they're just shooting these dudes in the back. Like, straight up in the back, so that's bad. And we would want to see... You know, the lights are actually shooting us, so we really want to get these line units up here. ASAP. Is what we want to do. Now, Chopstick makes a charge. We heard the noise. There's the two red lines. One unit going after the grenadier and one unit going after the cav. Uh, this person squares like immediately, like very nice reflexes there. I think a couple things about this. Well, what's gonna happen is Chopstick's gonna change the target to the cav because he sees the square and actually the third unit's gonna go to. I have a couple thoughts about this. 
The first is I wouldn't have charged at the Grenadier in the first place. The reason is I really only like to charge cav at units that my infantry are shooting at. Right? Combined arms, you really want to use your cav as a tool to support your infantry. So a good general rule is only ever charge at something that your infantry is shooting at. All right. So going after the Grenadier, which we're not shooting at, is kind of not a great idea in the first place. The second thing, good move to change the target when you see the square. But second rule is never charge two cav at the same target because they're just redundant. They're going to get in each other's way. They're not going to double the effectiveness of the charge. So just send the one Lancer. So we could have pulled this unit back. And the third general rule, of course, is you probably just don't want to use cav to charge random cav anyway. We want to use cav as a tool to support our infantry, yada, yada, yada. So I probably wouldn't have charged the lant or, you know, the Cossack here either. Or in other words, we have three really bad cav charges going on. And what we were worried about earlier happened, the Cossack does go after the lights and the line aren't there yet to protect it. So that's something we might think about. I don't think that this Cossack unit is going to be super efficient. The Fusilier just might start to be better than it in, uh, in melee. And a couple of his lights were at super early. I, I thought that was weird. I guess that was just the extra fire part for the Grenadiers being back there. I don't know. Okay, so a weird thing happens here. All right, so the cab does route. Right. And notice the Portuguese cab coming around the back. That's going to be real. Okay, so something happens here. So Chopstick has decided he wants to pull his lights off of the line. And, and he's putting his line infantry in. That's fine, I guess. But he's issued this move order for the lights to show up over here. This is the problem with this is you never want your lights out off on their own because they can't square, so they're going to be weak to have, and it's actually kind of relevant because the Portuguese player is moving five units of them over. So the good play for the Portuguese here in the next couple of minutes is going to be to move their cav over to take out these lights if they get there. The problem is that this order it just kind of means that the lights are just going to kind of wander across the front of the line and they're all going to get shot to death. So a better way to do this, if you want to put your lights off the line, okay, fine. Um, but maybe move them back here and then over or just move them back here to hang out. I mean, these lights are super relevant units. Like they're going to be good if we win this, you know, going into the end game against the center player. So we really do want to keep these units alive, but moving them across the line like this is, is just kind of a bad idea. And then the other comment I make right now is how we're positioning our line infantry. Um, notice you want to always kind of keep in the back of your head an observation. Oh God, look at the, <laughs> why, why is this happening? Don't do that. Don't charge five units of cab, three other units of cab. Just please don't, please stop. Okay. So our line here, or I'm sorry, what I was saying is, you always want to keep in your mind, you know, be thinking about what is my opponent doing? Or right now I'm thinking my opponent is really, really narrow. He's only occupying this much space. And our infantry is in triple rank. You know, we have three lines here. So we could easily make our line infantry twice as long, right? And we have eight units of line here. So what we could do is drag four here and push two up this direction. Oh, actually the house is empty. We could just put two units in the house. And then maybe two units here to get an angle this direction. So in other words, we really want to push the enveloping motion, right? So, if, you know, forward line there, you know, stretching line of tree all the way out is pretty much always the best answer, right? Kind of what I'm getting at. And notice now that all the lights are dead because of that move. I guess one's left. All right, so what happens next is... Chopstick charges two cav into the, the flank. In a vacuum, again, this is a great idea. However, there's a couple reasons that make this not the best time for this. The first is, notice these two units are both... Um, okay, that one's firing right now. But this unit is idle, so this unit isn't shooting. 
So what we really want is to get some infantry up on an angle here so that the cav can support them. The second reason this is just bad timing for this is that our French buddy in the center has sent two cav and they're harassing our opponent on the right. And so this cav charge is again sort of redundant. There's already cav working over here. We can save this unit for later in the game. In, in fact, I would say it's pretty clear that Chopstick has just got a slam dunk going on here. Like he outnumbers this person, you know, two to one or something like that right now. So Chopstick is going to win this game, right? You know, and we still have, you know, two other players that we got to kill. So we don't need to send this cav right now. Let's send them for, or save them for later in the game. So the shooting continues. French Cav does quite well. And the Portuguese still have all their Cav just kind of sitting back here, not doing a whole lot. I guess they get involved here. But what I don't like about what the Portuguese is doing is they're just using Cav to counter Cav. I don't see that as being super useful. And I'd love to see Chopstick moving this infantry. Oh, he does something good here. You know, he pulls his Lancers out. And a lot of people just don't get that you can use Lancers more than once, you know, especially because their big effect is the, the bonus on the charge, you know, charge your Lancer in, get a hit, pull them out, rinse and repeat. I mean, the most devastating feeling is when you're playing someone like Django used to be really good at this. He'd hit you with the same calf unit like four or five times. And like by the fourth time, somebody charges the same Lancer, you, you just like... Oh God, please stop. Like it, it's a horrible feeling, but you can use Lancers more than once. Try that. It, it's amazing. And it looks like Chopstick is going to do that right here, which is good. But I think we got this guy in the ropes. Like we're finally moving the infantry over here. Like this is what we would have seen, you know, a couple minutes ago. I need to stop saying, you know, you know, it's really annoying. I'm sure it's annoying you. It's annoying me more. I'm going to be better at that. But we're finally moving the infantry, the cav. I guess you would argue the cav are now kind of doing relevant things. There's only one French in the French unit route. So that happens. The Portuguese ha have just kind of attrition their own cav out without really accomplishing anything. I like this move again. Um, Chopstick made a really good play here that I, I missed by poor camera work. What had happened is... He'd have this light infantry unit that was kind of wandering this direction. And the Russian came in with a melee charge with the Grenadiers. What Chopstick did is he took his outside line infantry, clipped the melee, and countercharged. I like this play for a couple reasons. When somebody melee charges you, you have two options. First, you just square and take it. Or the second is you click melee yourself and countercharge. Now, in this particular case, the counter charge might not have been the best idea because Chopstick was working uphill, and the Grenadier is going to be a better unit in melee. I mean, it does have more men here, so this is maybe a wash. But what Chopstick effectively did is he saved the Fusilier. Fusilier is not going to be nearly as good in melee. So by having, you know, clicking melee and charge on this Musketeer to go intercept the charge from the Musketeer, diverted that charge away from the Fusilier, so saving the Fusilier. This might be more relevant if there were more men in the Fusilier, so I get that. But I just really like this as a play. And then I also love how his Cav unit is coming down the back to hit the Grenadier like that. If you look at that, um, you know, it says... Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, it says... Look at the card. It says concerned attacked in the rear so that that's a really good move that i like and again i like that we're moving the infantry up you know i like that you know, getting angles on people and jumping on those as soon as possible is is really well done yeah so that was the game from chopstick uh, there was a lot of great things to see here i love the aggressiveness of the player um I love that we ran for the hill. I love that he just wanted to get in there and fight. You know, if, if you do that, I'll give you a GG every time. You know what I mean? Like, let's just get in there and fight. Let's play the game. Uh, give you a GG every time. Uh, we did some good things with the second batch of calf, you know, pushing them in, pulling them out. Eventually, we did 
work the angle. Let's be aware of the terrain feature. I mean, we could have gotten another house. That would have been good. Yes, yeah, so let's work on that. Be aware of unit path thing. Probably pull the light straight back. That would have been a, a bit better. But otherwise, there's a lot to like about the game that Chopstick played, man. And I think you should you know, continue with it. And another thing that's a good idea is when you're on a 3v3, a very important strategic consideration is time. So because Chopstick won his flank so fast, he's going to be able to turn and affect or participate in the center of the field, right? Which is going to make his team way more likely to win the battle. You know, if you're on a 3v3, if you can carry your flank, that's great. But ideally, you carry your flank very fast so that you can turn and help your partner. It's a very valuable tip and one that's underlooked. I mean, I mean, this game, for all we know, is going to be decided because Chopstick's going to show up on this player's flank with like eight pretty healthy units. I mean, who knows? The Portuguese could win against France if Chopstick isn't there, but because Chopstick is going to be there, the center is not going to be really much of a question, I would think, right? And if that happens, we kind of snowball things, and that means the French is going to come out of this engagement with a few more units than they otherwise would have, and then they get to turn on and help their partner. So it's a really effective way to te win team games is if you're going to beat your opponent, you want to do it as fast as possible. The converse is if you're losing, you want to lose it as fast as possible. I haven't done a video on a 3v3 game in quite a while, so something I haven't talked about lately. But you can see Chopstick showing up on the back of the Portuguese player here. So we're going to make their life really, really hard. And it looks like the uh, English player is winning against the Dutch over there. So, yeah, good team win. Good team win all around. Yeah, very underappreciated concept is how winning fast is useful. And there you go. This is the game. Looks like a little melee action happened down here. People are fighting in the house. I always like looking at the fighting. Oh, never mind. Victory screen. Congratulations, Chopstick. You had the most kills. So thanks again, dude, for sending me the game. I love doing it. If anybody else wants to send me a game, I can't promise I'll watch it, but I might watch it. The email address is, quote, send me your replays at gmail.com. I will put that in the description. Hope you all have a great day or doing well. Take care of yourselves and I will see you in the next video.